What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to go over the top 5 most commonly asked SQL interview questions. And as you can see, I have broken them down into these 5 categories over here where I'm going to show you multiple examples of the possible questions you are going to get. And if you want to practice this with me, I am going to upload both the raw data and the SQL code in my GitHub page. So feel free to download that and follow this tutorial through with me. If you do not have SSMS installed, then you can follow this link and it's a video of me showing you how to download and install SSMS. And before we jump into this video, let me just say that if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with the raw data we are going to use, we actually have three tables. If I run them over here, we have our main data, which is basically some car data the retail price of the cars and also the invoice price, body size and body style. We have another table, which is our second table, which is basically the used prices of the cars. And we have another table, which is uh, this one down here, which is some additional information about the car. Right, starting with the first SQL question that you are definitely going to get in your interview is going to be an aggregation question. So there is no way you're going to have an Excel test and they are not going to ask you to aggregate your data. And when we say aggregate, we mean the sum, the average, the count, the minimum and the maximum. And very quickly, just to display the sum over here in the first query, I am basically summing the retail price of all of our cars, all of our data. So this is our main data set. This is the retail price. The question could possibly be, what is the total retail price of all cars? And you basically have to sum your data. Same way you need to know how to average your data, very easy. You need to know how to count your data. So this is basically counting the retail price, which is basically all the rows we currently have. You need to know how to select the minimum and also the maximum. So if I run this, you can see that this is the minimum and this is the maximum. Now, what I have just shown you is aggregating on the total data set. However, most likely you are going to have to aggregate your data based on a specific column. So in this example I have over here, we are summing the retail price based on make. And make is the manufacturer, as you can see over here. To do this, first you need to specify the column you want to aggregate by, then you need to aggregate your data and don't forget to add the group by. If you don't add the group by, then the aggregation is not going to work. So if I run this over here, you can see that this is failing and it's actually saying to me, you are missing the group by clause. Another example we have over here is that you can apply multiple aggregations at the same time. So over here, I'm selecting make and then I'm summing the retail price. I am averaging the retail price and I'm also selecting the minimum retail price per make. So before you go into an SQL interview test, make sure you master the aggregations in SQL. The next thing they are going to test you in SQL is if you know how to apply conditions or filters. So over here, I have a lot of examples of conditions and filters. For example, they might say to you to show them all the Audi cars. This means that you need to select all your data set where make equals Audi. Another example is that maybe they ask you to show all the data where the model is not A3. As you can see, we have a lot of A3 models over here. So if I run this query, I'm selecting everything where the model is not A3. Maybe you get a different question that they're asking you to show all the data when the year is 2023 and 2024 over here. So again, you need to know how to write this. Another example is that maybe they ask you to show all the data where the body size is not mid-size or large. 
because as you can see in the body size, we have a large and mid-sized cars. So if you run this, you're basically selecting everything where the body size is not mid-size or large. Another example is that maybe they ask you to filter the data based on a value being more or less of a specific value. So over here, we are selecting all the cars that have a retail price less than 3,000, as you can see, sorry, 30,000, as you can see over here. Moving on, another example is that maybe they give you two conditions that you need to apply. In this example, they are asking us to select all the cars that have a retail price more than 100,000 and also the main equals Mercedes-Benz. So if I run this, it's going to show me all the Mercedes cars that cost more than 100K. Another example over here is that they are asking us to show all the cars that have a retail price more than 100K or they have coupe as body style. So this or over here basically means that one of the two conditions need to be true and I'm going to return the data. So if I show you this, you can see that these cars, they are coupe. That's why we get the data, even though they don't have a retail price more than 100K. And then if I move down to the 100K uh, retail price, you can see that these cars, it doesn't matter if they are coupe or not, they are coming back because they have more than 100K which satisfies one of our conditions. And our final example in conditions is that a lot of the times you're gonna be working with text and you're gonna to need to select or extract a specific phrase or specific characters from the text. So you will need to know how to use like, which is basically looking for the word Mercedes in the make. Because as you can see the Mercedes in make, they are actually Mercedes Benz. So if you put equals like this, it's not going to work because equals will need the exact make. When you use like though, it's basically searching for those characters in make and this is going to return all the Mercedes cars. So these are just a few examples on how to use conditions and filters, which there is no way that you're not gonna get a question like this in your interview test. Right, moving on, the next question you are definitely going to get is a subquery question or a nested query. So maybe you get a question saying, what is the total retail price for four-wheel drive cars? And if we check our raw data, this is both tables, by the way, the four-wheel drive cars is actually in a column on a different table over here in our second table called YouTube Car Info. So we basically need to sum the retail price from our main table where our index, which is our key column that we could join them together, is in. And then from our second table, I am selecting all the distinct indexes. So this is our second table. I'm selecting the distinct indexes where drivetrain, which is basically this column over here, equals four wheel drive cars. So if I actually select this, you can see that all these distinct indexes are four wheel drive cars. And then in our main query, by the way, this is our subquery. And in our main query, we are basically summing their price. Now, if we actually want to see the make, so aggregate this by make, in the second question over here is a copy paste, but I have just added make and the group by make. So if I view this now, we are summing the retail price for all four wheel drive cars, which is a question that you are definitely going to get in your interview test. They are going to ask you to aggregate some of your data that you need to use a subquery to filter your data. Right, moving on, the next question you are going to get is a joins or a union question. Now, there is absolutely no way that they are not going to test your knowledge in joins. Now, this is a very big subject join, so I suggest watching this tutorial, which is a deep dive on just joins. For this video, I'm just going to give you a few examples of joins, but I'm not actually going to explain how they work. 
Now I am just going to use a left join because this is the most used, the most commonly used join, which basically has table A, table B, and we are joining data from table B into table A. So one example of a question that you could get, it says join the cylinders and torque on the main data set. So we have these two tables, as we have shown before, our main table, and the second one is the car information. Now from car information, we want to take cylinders and torque and join it on our first table. The basic concept of joins is that you need to have a key column, which in our case is index, that both tables are going to match. Right, I'm going to move this down here just to go over the code. So in the code you see over here, I am saying select a.all. So I'm going to actually select all of the first table, comma b.cylinders and torque. So from our table b, I just want to take cylinders and torque. And I want to join these two tables now, table A and table B, using a left join, join them on a.index, which is a.index equals b.index. So if I run this quickly, you can see that we have all of our data for table A, and these two columns come from table B. The same query can also be achieved using this syntax down here. It's exactly the same, but instead of having just a column, I can actually wrap it into brackets. And the reason we do this is because we can actually limit our data before we apply the join. It's actually a very good concept. So you try to minimize your table as much as possible before you run the join. But these two queries, they return exactly the same results. It's just a different way of writing it. Right, moving on, the next example question we have says, Join the cylinders and torque on the main data set where mate equals Audi. So we just want the Audi cars. So we can copy and paste exactly the same query as we have above. So this query, all we have to do is to add in our A table where, and then say, sorry, where with capital and one W, uh, make, as I have down here, equals Audi. So this is only going to select the Audi cars as our table A, and it's going to join from B the cylinders and the torque. So if I run this quickly, we're gonna see that we only have Audi cars and we have the cylinder and the torque. So this is how joins work. Another example we have down here, it says, show the total retail price per make and transition for all all-wheel drive cars. To do this, we need to select a.make, which comes from our table A, b.transmissions, which comes from our table B that you see over here. We want to limit our table B to only have drivetrain equals or wheel drive cars, as the question is asking us. We need to match them on index again, and we also need to sum, because it's the total retail price, sum the retail price as retail price. So if I run this quickly, you can see that we actually have a join between these two tables, and we also have an aggregation on top per a column that comes from A and a column that comes from B. Now, if you want more of a deep dive on joins, as I said before, and on also different joins, because this is just the left join, we also have full join, inner join, cross join, and we also have unions. I have this tutorial over here that is basically a deep dive into joins, their theory, and also practical examples. Right, and lastly, the fifth most commonly asked question, SQL question you could possibly get, is a case or an if statement question. So they want to test your knowledge if you know how to use if or case. The first question we get, it says, create a new column that has a yes or no if the car is more than 100K. So if I run this query over here, what I'm saying here is that I'm selecting everything from our table, which is our main table. And I'm also creating another column that says, if the retail price is more than 100K, 
then add a yes. Otherwise, add a no, which is this new column you see over here. And it's very common to get one of these questions. Another example down here, it says, create a new category column with cars, and then it gives us the categories. So we have less than 30K, 30 to 50, 50 to 70, 70 to 90, and then 90 plus. For this example, I'm going to use case. The difference between if and case is that in if, I think you can only do about nine to 10 ifs within ifs, but with case, you can add as many case as you want. So in this example, let me just select it quickly. I am saying select everything. So we are going to select all the columns and then I'm saying comma and I'm creating another column called retail price categories, which is these categories where I'm saying case when the retail price is less than 30K, then add this in our new column. When the retail price is between 30K and 50K, add this, etc., etc., And then I'm ending this case as retail price categories. So they are testing my knowledge if I know how to create these new categories. Right, so these are the top five, in my experience, most commonly asked SQL questions. If you want more of a deep dive into SQL, like a full SQL tutorial, I suggest following this link where I go through a lot more examples and functionality in SQL. In the next few videos I have, I'm going to create practical example of tests so you can take them yourself and see how you perform. Right, so this is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, then please click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications in my future videos. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching this video and I'm going to see you in the next video.